a tīhei mauriora, e ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā iwi o te motu, hui hui nei tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou ngā rangatira o tēnei hui, kā nui te wā aroha ki a koutou. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, greetings, and to the leaders of the Royal New Zealand Returned and Services Association, greetings, and I salute you. I also want to specifically acknowledge Don McIver, your President, the Right Honourable John Key, Prime Minister of New Zealand, Ministers of the Crown, the Honourable Judith Collins, the Honourable Dr Wayne Mapp and the Honourable Christopher Finlayson, and representing Wellington, uh, Mr Ian McKinnon, uh, General Jones and Service Chiefs and Representatives, Commissioner Peter Marshall, David Ledson, and I understand Brian McMahon is here, the Anzac of the year, but I was told he may have gone AWOL. And a very special greeting to Willie Apiata, VC. Thank you for inviting me to address the 95th National Council meeting of the Royal New Zealand Returned and Services Association, or as most New Zealanders refer to you, the RSA. I do consider it a privilege to be here with you to officially open the 2011 National Council meeting and to reaffirm the theme, carrying the flag to all generations. It is also my honour to continue the long-standing tradition of representing the Queen, your patron, at this gathering. And to my mind, there's no better way of opening your conference and opening my remarks than by conveying to you a message from Her Majesty the Queen. Her Majesty's message is in response to a letter from Don McIver, and it reads, Please convey my warm thanks to the Chief Executive and Delegates of the Royal New Zealand Returned and Services Association for their message of loyal greetings, sent on the occasion of their 95th National Council meeting, which is being held today in Wellington. As your patron, I much appreciate your kind words and in return send my best wishes to all concerned for a most successful and enjoyable event. Elizabeth R. As many of you know, it's not my first time with you in this setting. However, I'm very conscious that my presence here has been intermittent at best. Uh, today I'll set about correcting that. I do detect a look of consternation. Let me assure you that I do not intend catching up on three or four years of commentary. Uh, but I do want to say a couple of things and I do want to say something about carrying the flag to all generations. Now I've enjoyed all of the opportunities that I've had meeting with New Zealand's veterans. Remembering and honouring their service has been and remains important to me. The Year of the Veteran and Tribute 08 are examples how we have been able to set some things right, some of those things that needed to be done. The need for getting things done for veterans, healing and remembrance spurned the establishment of what is now the Royal New Zealand Returned and Services Association during the First World War, three days after the first anniversary of the landings at Gallipoli. Since then, when New Zealanders have headed overseas to serve our country in the armed services, the RSA has been there seeing them off and you've been there greeting them on their return. This practice in current times is one that I applaud and to my mind it's illustrative of you carrying the flag to the current generation of veterans. Connecting to this current generation of veterans who are adding to our stories is important for the future of the RSA. There's a Maori saying, mate atu he tete kura, whaka ete mai he tete kura. As one frond dies, another one grows. The sailors, soldiers and airmen and women currently serving will one day fill your shoes as you've filled the shoes of others. And let me assure you, these new veterans are worthy. On the 6th of December, I will have the privilege of bestowing gallantry awards to Corporal Albert Moore, Corporal Matthew Bell, and Lance Corporal Alistair Baker for their courage in Afghanistan last year. Throughout our history, 
the RSA has faithfully remembered those who served and those who fell. This past year, many of your comrades have passed on and joined their mates. This past year has also seen us mourn the loss of two SAS soldiers who were killed in action in Afghanistan, Corporal Douglas Grant, Dougie Grant, and Lance Corporal Leon Smith. You have faithfully cared for those who were injured and loved and the loved ones of those who did not return. This past weekend, we commemorated the armistice that ended the First World War. You've also faithfully advocated for the interests of New Zealand's veterans. These practices are illustrative of you carrying the flag for preceding generations. During my term as the Governor-General, the past and the present will come together as we New Zealanders remember significant milestones in our military history. We will mark the centenary of the start of the First World War and the 75th anniversary of the start of the Second World War in 2014. In 2015, we will commemorate 100 years since the Gallipoli landings and our Anzac heritage that we share with our closest mates, family, Australia. Over the next five years, there will be other constant reminders of the fact sacrifice New Zealanders have paid in conflicts across the globe to protect the things that are important to us. Collectively, we will reflect on the service of New Zealand's soldiers, sailors, airmen and airwomen in peace and war. Men and women who left their homes and loved ones to guard Pacific's triple star and keep New Zealand free from tyranny to defend our values and our traditions and to bring peace and stability to troubled lands. Over the next five years, it will be especially poignant for the RSA as you celebrate your centenary year and 100 years on from the first Anzac Day in 2016. Anniversaries are also a time to look forward. As a bearer of the flag of Anzac remembrance, the RSA has a role in shaping how we might celebrate the Anzac spirit over the next century. And it's reassuring to see that your initiatives, including Anzac of the Year, the Gallipoli Youth Award, and the Cyril Bassett VC speech competition have encouraged young New Zealanders to connect with you. The Futures Forum that you conducted and the new markers that you've set in living the Anzac spirit today will help ensure the RSA carries the flag to future generations. While individual accolades and national gatherings such as this one help to set the tone for the RSA, Carrying the flag to all generations involves connecting with people. The soul of the RSA movement lies in its local clubs and branches. That's where most members of the public have their first contact with the RSA. It also happens to be where potential members decide whether or not to join. To live the Anzac spirit in the next century, you will need to enhance the connections between your local clubs and their local communities. Open your doors to the communities you live and serve in. The growing numbers who attend Anzac Day ceremonies suggest that New Zealanders want to celebrate our heritage, our service, our families within the RSA family. The example of the Rugby World Cup gives a glimpse of what the RSA could achieve. Success there came from local communities embracing the notion of a stadium of four million people and making it their own. The almost five million New Zealanders at home and overseas have already endorsed the notion of you championing, championing the Anzac spirit across all generations, as declared by your president. To my mind, now the RSA needs to stand up and be our champion. And with that small challenge, all that's left for me to do is wish you all the best for your conference and say that it gives me great pleasure to declare the 95th 2011 National Council meeting officially open. Nō reira, kia ora, kia kaha, kia manawa nui. I wish you well, I wish you vigour in your discussions, and I wish you patience in your deliberations. Thank you. <laughs>